Start game now. Welcome retro fans to another edition of the No Swear Gamer. Today we're going to continue our ABCs of retro series with the letter S. Now in this series we go through the alphabet one letter at a time and review a game for each letter. Now I know this was a big mystery, but today's game is none other than Super Mario Bros. 3 for your Nintendo Entertainment System. Came to the United States in 1990 and was preceded by the movie The Wizard in 1989. Came out a few months before the game was released. And it was very notable because in the movie The Wizard we got to see Super Mario Brothers 3 in action for the first time. This was before the internet of course when you could go online and see trailers so it was very exciting for video game fans to see this game that many knew, didn't even know was going to be coming out. So yeah there was an incredible amount of hype to the game as a matter of fact some people consider The Wizard a trailer for Super Mario Brothers 3 so if you happen to see a trailer for The Wizard you just saw the trailer for the trailer of Super Mario Brothers 3. Now Super Mario Brothers 3 would go on to have incredible success and incredible hype. As a matter of fact, I remember the first two times I saw this game out in the wild before its official release. One, somehow a local video store got an early copy, but to rent it you had to put down a hundred dollar deposit. I also saw this in arcades in a Play Choice 10 machine. For those of you who don't know, Play Choice 10 machine basically had 10 Nintendo games, but when you put a quarter in, you didn't get to play the game until you died, you only got it on a timer, something like 100 seconds or 200 seconds, and then you had to put another quarter in. But they proudly on this play choice 10 said, we have Super Mario Brothers 3, and that's where I first experienced this game. It would go on to sell millions upon millions of copies, becoming the second best-selling game of all time for the Nintendo, just behind Super Mario Brothers, which had a big advantage because it was packed in with so many systems. And Guinness Book of World Records at one time even recognized that this was the best-selling game being sold without a system. So yeah, incredible amounts of success and incredible amounts of hype. Some people call this the greatest game of all time. I'll tell you what though, I really dig the label art, which is also also, the box art. I love this yellow and just the simplicity of, hey, it's Mario, but wait, what's going on? He has ears, a raccoon tail, and appears to be flying. Very, very iconic, for especially for kids who grow up in the area of the Nintendo Entertainment System. I would love to see this on a t-shirt. I think just seeing that, a yellow t-shirt with just that graphic would be really awesome. I'm sure they have them somewhere. Anyways, highly praised. We're going to pop this into my Nintendo Entertainment System and see if it still deserves the praise today. Let's roll that footage. In Super Mario 3, Bowser is back and this time he has brought his seven kids along. Each one has conquered a kingdom, stole a magic wand, and now it's up to you, our unemployed plumber, to be our hero once again in this one or two player platformer comprised of eight worlds full of diverse levels. Graphically speaking, Mario and Company has never looked so good on the NES. It has an art style that separates it from the previous two games and every character looks better than ever. I wouldn't call it 16-bit graphics, I think some people say that, but they're going a little bit too far, but it is definitely one of the better looking games on the Nintendo. However, I did have a small problem with the graphics. I never noticed it before, but when replaying it for the first time in many years on my HD TV, I noticed what appeared to be off-colored graphical glitches on the far right of the screen as I moved along. It would appear that this is caused from how hard the game is pushing the system. But on older CRT TVs, this is less noticeable because we don't see as much of the screen as we do on HD TVs. Now, this did not affect all the levels equally, but it definitely distracted me in some of the earlier ones the most. You can still notice this somewhat on older TVs, but is definitely more noticeable on HD TVs and on some of the virtual console releases. Now, sound and music is solid with very catchy music, even if some of the music is recycled a lot, probably due once again to the limits of the system. Thankfully, hearing some of the tunes over and over again never got too old for me. But as always, gameplay is what matters most, and Super Mario 3 excels. First of all, the game is the most non-linear of the three Super Mario games. It is here where we see our beloved overhead map in the series for the first time. Yes, you always start in the same place, and yes, your goal is always the same at the end, but how you get there is up to you thanks to branching paths. 
You can try and complete worlds as quickly as possible, leaving some levels unvisited, or you can explore and conquer each level until your heart's content. Most levels allow you to freely explore without the fear of the screen freezing behind you as you move. So even if you're at the end of the level, you can go all the way back to the beginning in most cases. Now, in addition to Bowser's kids, the game also introduces many characters who would become mainstays in this series, including the dog meets bowling ball chain chomp, the skeleton dry bones, and the ghost Boo, who in the manual we find out that his full name is Boo Diddly. Bo may not know Diddly, but Boo does. Each world also has mid-bosses to complement the end bosses and traveling hammer brothers that will yield a treasure chest with an item if defeated. These battles tend to be enjoyable with just the right level of challenge. Mario and Luigi also control very well. The unique traits of Super Mario Bros. 2 have been replaced with the tight controls of the original and that is just fine with me. We also have tons of new power-ups. Yes, mushrooms, fire flowers, and stars are still here, but they are now joined by the Super Leaf that turns you into a flying raccoon, just like you find in Central Park. A Takuni suit that raccoons you even more and gives you the power to turn into an invincible statue. A hammer suit, a frog suit, and my favorite, the Goomba boot that lets you hop around in Andre the Giant's old wrestling boot. Never have the Goombas been so afraid. Yes, there are so many power-ups now that it's like Lucky Charms just got five magically delicious new marshmallows. Bring on the purple horseshoes. There are also lots of secrets and bonuses all over the place. As always, you can find some in pipes, or you can climb up vines, or you can go into areas that appear to be inaccessible to the naked eye, at least until you watch the wizard and then you find out you can actually go there. But there are also bonus stages on the world map. Some hold three line slot machines, some let you pick a mystery item from three closed chests, and another has you play a memory match game for items that I think was made just to get kids to buy Nintendo Power Player Guide for Super Mario Bros. 3 since it is so very difficult to master. I'm a pretty good memory player, but this game really kicked my rear end. And speaking of items, not only are you able to hold some that you get from the treasure chest to use in the future, but in a two-player game, you can try and take them from the other player. If a player goes onto a square occupied by the previous player, you will enter a two-game version, a two-player game version of the original Mario Brothers before they got Super. Yep, before Super Mario Brothers, there was an arcade game called Mario Brothers. It was a single screen kind of platformer where you kind of cleared out the sewers of various enemies. You can play it for points or you can try and take down your brother and their items. I thought it was really cool of Nintendo to hide the original game in Super Mario Brothers 3, especially before they re-released it about a hundred times, including on the e-reader and all the Super Mario Advance games on the Game Boy Advance. But I digress. Now there's also the warp whistles that the wizard movie once again showed us that seem to have come from the Legend of Zelda of all places with a familiar tune that whisks you away. This can be a long game without any passwords or save states so warp whistles are a welcome break. Now, the game can be very challenging at times, especially the later levels, but it seems to do a very good job of not getting overly frustrated. You are given several chances to earn extra lives throughout, and if you do run out, you can continue at the beginning of the last world you were on, albeit you will have to start back at the first level and work your way through. This is a family-friendly game, unless you think too much about Mario squishing turtles or Goombas under his feet, but really young players may find this too challenging. It can also cost a little bit on eBay, with loose copies going for about $15 and complete ones going in the $30 range. So would I recommend this? Absolutely. This is still a blast to play and should be in most NES collections. It was also updated and remade for both the Super Nintendo and Super Mario All-Stars and the GBA as well. So where would I rank this? Well, there are a lot of game critics who say that this is the best game of all time. I don't know if I would go that far, but let's compare it to my current top game, Bust to Move 2 for the PlayStation 1. Both are highly recommended and both are a blast to play. Bust to Move 2 has great multiplayer and replayability but Super Mario Bros. 3 is an NES masterpiece. Now, it's not perfect. I would have liked the password system, and I did notice the graphical glitches, but it has the it factor. And while Bust a Move 2 is awesome, 
for the first time since episode four, ba -ba -ba -ba, we have a new number one game and its name is Super Mario Bros. 3 or SMB3 or Super Mario Bros. 3 or the third game in the Super Mario series. Coming soon is the letter T. Here's a hint. It's my first game review for a Sega CD game, and it could have a brother named Lightning Eagle. Try and figure that one out. It shouldn't be too hard. Now, I wanted to give a special shout out to the Retro League podcast and its hosts, Jungle Rat Rob and Hughes. Hughes sent me this game when I won Listener of the Month recently, and Jungle Rat Rob has spoken highly of the show as well. As a matter of fact, I've heard that his wife sometimes watches episodes, so Mrs. Jungle Rat, if you're watching, Thank you for your time, and I really like what you did with your hair. It looks good on you. They run a great podcast that helped inspire the show, and you can find their episodes on iTunes, or you can go to their website, theretroleague.com. So thank you for watching today's episode. If you would be so kind, would you consider liking this video and subscribing if you haven't done so already? You can also find me on Facebook or Twitter as The No Swear Gamer. Check it out, and I look forward to seeing you next time right here on The No Swear Gamer. Take care, everybody.